Hey everyone, welcome back. After the looting was done, I picked up a Zamrak transport, a, the civilian kind, which it, you, looks kind of familiar to the ones we saw at the outpost last video. This lets us stay in cover, obviously, so that's why I grabbed it. More seating space for all the POWs we'll be picking up. And maybe it does, maybe it does, it may just be a placebo thing, but I think it might provide some cover to the people inside. So here we are, heading into Kavala finally. We're going to pass by a factory, and yep, got a few soldiers as well as some MRAPs. Now, fun facts, the older versions of this mod, this scenario, would have an unarmed Strider at the roadblocks. It would be in between the two machine gun bunkers, but those got removed. Kind of sad because it just meant that whenever you broke through a roadblock, you got yourself a free vehicle that was pretty much immune to small arms fire. And I was checking to see if they had uh, drivers in them. I was thinking maybe I'll just run out real quick and grab one, but yeah, they they had drivers in them. So that's good to know in the future if we decide to attack up a factory with a contend with the, some armor. And yes, my frame rate is going to start plummeting in here. So the way the civilian spawn things work is that each town has a population, and the civilian uh, spawn rate is a percentage of that population. Is that it? and it spawns in the uh, civilians. Uh, this isn't just people that are walking around, but also vehicles, which leads to shit like this, because the AI doesn't know how to fucking drive, and they all, you know, crash like this. So that's always fun. Now here at the seaport, we saw they had a few boats out at sea with the uh, machine guns on them. Oh yeah, the uh... Frame rate has dropped low enough that the game's starting to do things to try and make it better. We can't head out that way though, because that's that road is in front of the the sea base and that might blow our cover, which is something we really don't want to do right now. Gonna wanna try and delay that as much as possible. So we're gonna try we're gonna put this vehicle somewhere safe in like an alleyway somewhere and I'll hop on out and try to do some reconnaissance. Ooh, yeah, look at all those guys. And once we go loud to go into the outpost, they're all gonna start heading up there. That castle up there, that that's the outpost. Yeah, this is made even more of a dick mission because this outpost is not a uh, very easy one to have access to. But yeah, something else to note is that even if you yourself aren't undercover, if you're not in the same vehicle as the AI, then that is not considered undercover, and enemy soldiers will start attacking them. So that's why I have to put this truck somewhere where there's no enemies, because if I jump out and they all see him, they'll all attack him. So we're going to cut out my recon gathering. It's pretty much, there's a fuckload of guys to the south, and there's a roadblock somewhere in the northeast. I hopped into this other vehicle because it's smaller and will... I, I've tried walking up here a few times, but the AI just... Something about the Arma AI, it will never ever want to disengage. It will always want to fight. So when I was walking up here and I would get up to this specific spot, right, and I would stop and I would wait for everyone to catch up, they'll all opt to turn around and start walking back towards the, the seaport and then start a fight with those guys. And I, even though I'm like, hey, go here, move forward, move forward, and they don't do it. The other reason is, with a fast vehicle, it'll let us get into some cover, because you see, we're just out in the open as soon as we enter. I was uh, kind of surprised this actually worked somewhat. So we'll get behind here, and uh, get going. Alright, alright, getting shot at. God damn. God, yeah, this, uh, maybe this wasn't such a great idea, and, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Right off the bat, we lost half of our fighting force. Again, uh, not, not too, not too hot with grenades. I mean, god damn, he just fucking launches those things. But even then, I feel like, uh, they have, like, really low kill range. So something I forgot to mention last video is when you're against certain like a uh, 
ch like chest high wall cover or uh, if you're laying prone on the floor you can press C and you will mount the gun on the uh, on the floor or on the cover which really helps with preventing your uh, hands from shaking sadly I don't have a, an, a med kit on me to try and patch up try to patch up our buddy right there But Costa does, so I'm gonna tell him to try and do it. Heal that soldier. Copy. Feel free to get on that anytime, Costa. I'm providing covering fire. Oh, you fucker! Come on. This is another issue with Arma AI is that uh, for some reason, a lot of times they'll just decide, you know what? I don't want to do that. I can't do it. I'm not gonna do it. So we're just gonna. Take. We're gonna loot our dearly departed friend. He should have a med kit on him. There we go. Then we'll go ahead and patch up Marcos and get him back in the fight. Honestly, surprised the uh, the guys back at the docks haven't ran up here yet to try and pincer us. And yeah, and those guys are kind of a bitch to get. So admittedly, my aim may just be horribly off, which could be right. I picked up this ACOG. God damn it. I picked up this ACOG sight and the uh, I'm not quite used to its zeroing distance. It's set to 300 meters. I can't zero it any shorter. So I, I'm kind of guessing how it went to low where I got a fire to hit him. And yeah, damn, we got guys over here on our right too. For those who are not, for those who don't know, zeroing distance is at what point the bullet will meet your sights. At what distance, I, just, I mean. So at this point, the shots won't match where the uh, crosshairs are aiming at until 300 meters. So when, it, when a target is closer than 300 meters, I need to aim lower than the target because the bullet goes upward. Kinda like a slingshot, and God damn it, there's a fucking helicopter out in the distance. Hope it's not heading this way. And then, of course, when the target is beyond that distance, you need to aim higher. Though, aiming is kind of hard right now because I'm wounded. I'm t my guy's exhausted. Uh, in the last video when I talked about how like there's a stamina meter and how that should help out with the, uh, the whole moving and having shaky hands thing, well, it's still kind of there. As you can see, I'm, I'm nearly at full stamina, and yet just, you know, strutting around about 20 30 feet my guy starts shaking like crazy now I don't think I've mentioned this before but every outpost has crates like that similar to the ones we have back at HQ that have goodies in them that one didn't have any uh, health kits though which I was looking for but thankfully those transports tend to always have them now I want to go around these guys until our men to engage will hopefully means they'll they'll kind of move up on their own. So they are providing some good distractions. But there's a thing about Arma AI is that it always wants you. And by that I mean, oh hey, the rest of the guys surrendered. Nice. Got it, And by that I mean, I'm honestly surprised that these two guys, while they're shooting at my teammates, didn't immediately snap to me to shoot me. It's kind of that thing where the AI wants you dead. Oh. Got some gunfire going off in the distance. So we need to get our guys. Oh, god damn it. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Thankfully that guy didn't kill any of the any of our troops, just wounded them. Something I kinda missed from Arma 2, and this is my Arma 2 story. I, I played a scenario where you investigate a village, I think, that has some insurgents in it. And when I did it, you, you arrive on, in a Humvee, you and your men step out and you walk around while the Humvee drives behind you. And as soon as the mission starts, my guy, you know, step out, you start walking, my team leader gets shot, but he's still alive. And in that game, I don't know why it's not in this one, but in Arma 2, you could pick people up wounded people you could you could drag them and you can still shoot while you're dragging you can pick them up and lift them over you know fireman carry them which is pretty badass so that's what I did I immediately ran over to my team leader picked him up and ran behind cover 
and did some medical work on him to get him moving. And then we cleared through the rest of the, the map no problem, which is pretty badass. So now we finally got our POW. He looks a little bloodied, but... Well, he's going to be rescued by the Liberation. He should be ready to fight for the Liberation. I'm going to tell him to arm up, so... You know, it's always good to have an extra gun with us. Now for the hard part is having to go back to HQ with him and survive. Just as a reminder, right outside this outpost, we got a seaport full of angry men. I also got a few boats in the in the uh, in the ocean waiting for us. Uh, what's weirdly enough, though, even though I told the guy to automatically rearm, he like didn't do it right, for lack of a better word. He just kind of runs around, and grabs uh, some rockets, and that's it. He doesn't bother grabbing armor or anything else. Like I just saw there. Now something I don't think I've actually mentioned when it comes down to uh... Oh wait. There's more shots going off in the distance now. That must be the uh, the cavalry. Yep. So whenever we capture an outpost... Petro sends some sends some garrisons on over. Uh, the way it works is that if you uh, if it's about to be attacked, he sends reinforcements. After the attack happens and you manage to defend yourself, the troops disappear and you have to expand HR to garrison your places yourself. Also, we're gonna try and make our escape since the enemy should be distracted. And uh, Marcos, what the fuck are you doing? Oh my god. Welcome to Arma 3 AI. So as I was saying, something I didn't talk about yet is that when you're inside of trucks like these ones, you can, instead of transferring the contents of the vehicle into the cargo container, into the, uh, the containers, you can transfer the containers into the truck. Which is what we did here. And now I'm going to manually have to rearm our POW. Which is something I've, uh, I don't think I've mentioned either, but rearming is the simple, well, not simple, but kind of tedious because you have to run on over and put your troops into a vehicle, then access their inventory through the, uh, squad order menu. So with our guy, we're going to want him to, of course, wear some armor, we're going to want him to wear a helmet, actually hold a rifle. I was going to try and see if I can make him be our medic replacement medic by giving him a pack with some field uh, medication in it, but no, that didn't work out. It seems that only soldiers you specifically recruit as medics can actually use med kits. Which is a bit of a shame. And for whatever reason, we can't get him to wear a helmet either. And nor a gun. I don't know what's up with that, but once I took off the suit, I was able to put I was able to put the gun in his hand. But still couldn't do the helmet. So there's a whole bunch of bad guys right out front. Even though they're being distracted, they're still going to turn around and go for us. So I'm going to do some heavy uh, heavy assaulting, I guess, for lack of a better term. M my hope was is to provide some cover for the allies coming into our base. Damn, it's getting really bad out there. But yeah, to you know, shoot, shoot, shoot the, shoot the enemy from behind as our allies are trying to get in. See if maybe that works out. Yeah, you can see tracers and shit flying off out there. Pretty hectic stuff. We're gonna keep our out, our, our teammates in the back though, because they're they'll probably get shot or, as Marco showed in that cut, you know, running on out. There's some of our allies right there actually. In that, uh, you'll notice there's a truck that doesn't look like a AAF truck. Uh, and our allies are around that truck. And something else, oh wait, never mind, I did mention this. But what sucks though about tr using uh, bipods and the like is that, or setting guns down on the ground, is that you can't aim below you. That probably sounds dumb and probably obvious. I don't know, I've never shot a gun with a bipod before, but I would think it'd be possible to aim below you if you're, used, if you're you know, you got a gun over something. Also, you can also do several different uh, positions 
you know, stances as I showed off there. And if you notice again in the top right how you can see the icon of the guy, sometimes you'll see like an arrow that points up or an arrow that points down. That's, you know, entering a stance but like kind of peaking a little bit higher or peaking a little bit lower. And just like that, that one rocket, it gets quiet. There went our, uh, there goes our distraction. And now the enemy is just going to focus on this outpost once again. And I'm just thinking, man, what, what, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We got all these motherfuckers right outside. I need ammo. Also, the weight thing was kind of making it a pain in the ass to aim. So we're going to drop our, we're going to drop our, our, uh, our vests. I mean, we've, we've got over 170 shots, so we won't need the extra shots that are kept in that vest. And can I just say, it feels goddamn good to be shooting a light machine gun that doesn't fucking suck. Again, Battle Battlefield 1, I tried playing the support class, and apparently someone at DICE thought, you know what? The light machine guns are just too good, so why don't we make them fucking garbage? We're gonna make the first few shots completely inaccurate. Yeah, we're gonna go against the grain here where your first few shots are the most accurate shots. And instead we're gonna make it so the first few shots are the most inaccurate ones and then they have it gradually get more accurate the more you shoot. And it's like, wow, fucking really? And not, But not just that. Not only did they make it so its accuracy fucking sucks on the first few shots, they also gave them lower damage. So fucking according to, and I know they patched it to be a little bit better, but on the whole, it's still pretty terrible. Is that when the game first came out, according to DICE, a fucking shot from a light machine gun was weaker than a shot coming from a pistol at every single distance. You did more damage with your fucking pistol than you did with your fucking main weapon. And they, they try to turn around and go, oh, but suppression, suppression, that doesn't really exist. I've shot, you know, 10 plus rounds out of Sniper just for him to cleanly get a headshot on me on his first chance. But that's not this game. This is Arma. And I have to say, this LMG fucking rocks. I kind of wish that it'd be possible to carry it as well as some ammunition without having to worry about, uh, you know, the stamina thing. Or at least be able to wear a vest and a helmet and not have the, the crazy shaky hands going on. Because I would totally run around with just an LMG and just leave a bunch of ammo in the in the truck. But yeah, this is uh this was fairly tense for me because any any at any time I could get shot just once and bam, dead. And now I'm using the map drawing function to try and draw a a route. We want to try to avoid the seaport as much as possible, but we can't go too far north because there's a there's a roadblock out there. So here we go. We're gonna tr we're gonna try and get out of here. Nice and clean, perfect. I oh whoa, what the hell, man? That's Arma Three physics for you. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't. Oh god damn it! I'm surprised I didn't also blow up my tires. That's a a consistent issue in, with Arma as well, where You'll love to have a rock, and your fucking both front tires will just explode. But hey, we, we made it out of the, the more difficult part. Oh, god damn, that was a close shot. I need some help. No. And it looks like the POW got hit, but thankfully it seems his vest was able to keep it from being a, a lethal shot. So just, just, just a smooth on ride back to base. I did some reconnaissance and there was no roadblocks on our route, so yeah, just 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 smooth, steady, absolutely nothing going wrong. I am not subtly suggesting anything else. Also, this building to our right right now is the bank. If we were to ever get a uh, bank robbery mission, we would have to hit up that building. Yeah, it, it seems that all the soldiers in town is probably crowding around that outpost because there, there's no one out here and we couldn't exit the way we came because there was that factory there that had those two M wraps as well as the soldiers protecting the factory 
So we'll just take a nice, smooth, relaxing drive up these hills. You know, we're behind buildings, so there'll be absolutely no problems whatsoever. Hearing some ricochets, but come on, what are the odds of us getting hit? Just what are the odds? Ah! God fucking damn it. Come on! Yeah, he just fucking shot me right through the goddamn building like it was nothing. Also, here's a second go, and oh god damn it, this time around. Oh, fuck. I don't know how the hell we met. So, so let me get this straight, right guys? I could literally plow my vehicle head first into a hole, into like, what was that, six or seven enemies? And only get shot like once or twice, but not a, not a one shot kill shot. Right? I could do that and survive. But I could be uphill behind a bunch of buildings, moving around in a vehicle, and get shot from, my, I think it's the back, because that's where I was hearing the ricochets come from. Get shot from the back, through the fucking uh, back of this vehicle, and get hit in the head through my helmet. Yep, that is Arma 3 for you guys. Just, you know... Yeah, the AI can miss sometimes, but the whole fact is that the AI just literally just rolls if they hit or miss you. You know, if you put a 33% chance, well, if the RNG rolls that, it's going to hit. Even if you are, say, rolling around a vehicle, dodging and strafing. But hey, we're, we're home free once again. We're going to offload all our stuff off our PRW since he'll be leaving us when we get back to base. Nothing can go wrong, and God fucking damn it, are you kidding me? And there goes Marcos, died on the home stretch. We were just outside of HQ. That uh, also causes some worry that there's a patrol somewhat near HQ that we'll have to go and uh, flush out here. Because once again, we don't want them getting too close. If they kill Petros, we lose, we lose a bunch of stuff, and that's no good. Oh, here we go. We we left four men strong. We returned to POW's gonna hop on out, and after a while he will despawn. We did get two HR for the uh, for completing the mission though, so I guess we're at a at least we're not at not at a loss here. Waiting. Patch ourselves up, patch up the vehicle as well, offload all the shit into the into the crate. Well, that was a fairly hectic and crazy fight. I'm honestly surprised uh, that we did it. It could have gone a hell of a lot worse. I mean, we were at an outpost that we had to attack from, uh, you know, from downhill. It was right next to a seaport with a bunch of soldiers. There's a roadblock nearby. It could have gone a hell of a lot worse. There was that helicopter we saw at one point that never came around, thankfully. Yeah, it could have gone a lot worse. But we came back. We, we are, were nets zero on HR, and we also got a bunch of new goodies from the outpost. Wait. We'll salute you guys, all of you who died to liberate the island. We're going to give the enemy hell, and they will feel the boot of the liberation movement stomping on their faces forever. Good night, everybody.